Bokir Tov, I'm Stephen Benun uh, with Israeli News Live on this very somber Friday morning in Israel. This morning was laid to rest the murdered couple uh, that was killed earlier this week, uh, and that's uh, Rabbi um, uh, Itam and his precious wife, Naama Henkin. Uh, they, were, they were murdered earlier this week. Many of you may already be aware of this. Uh, right in front of their children, they were killed there in Samaria, just not far from Jerusalem. Uh, they had four children, uh, one that was uh, only um, uh, four months old. There was also a four-year-old, seven-year-old, and a nine-year-old child in the car when they were gunned down in front of their children and murdered. Uh, it has been the Fatah uh, movement that has claimed responsibility uh, of this, which, by the way, uh, the Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas is a part of this particular faction. And... It, it is a senseless crime, uh, nonetheless. And my heart goes out for this family and our sincere prayers uh, for these children that are now orphans that do not have their parents any longer. And I, I'm just very concerned because Israel is playing political games. Not that they want to play political games, but the pressure of the world is so great against Israel that they have to play these political maneuvers trying to make peace, trying to bring about some kind of consensus. And yet at the same time, this is what's bringing about the murder of innocent Israelis uh, in the country there is these concessions that are made. And of course, uh, parts of uh, East Jerusalem and other places have been turned over to Palestinian Authority police. So the Jewish people are not being protected the way they should because the government is trying to make concessions. Now, some would argue that there has not been a two-state solution and this is why this is happening. But that's to the contrary. There's already two states. They just don't make it very public to you as of yet. As they build the infrastructure, as they prepare Jerusalem to be an international city. And by the way, that the, the, the tunnels that I have showed you guys before there coming up on Highway 1, it's definitely going to be a checkpoint. I know that Avi Lipkin disagrees with that, but just the other day, uh, speaking with Brother Kellen, a, a family that, that he knows that lives there uh, in Israel, been there for 40 years living there, brings up to him, not knowing me, brings up to him about the checkpoints being built on Highway 1 and how they're going to internationalize Jerusalem. They were already aware of it. Not to mention, after I spoke with Avi, I was on my way down to the airport. The cab driver, as we passed these tunnels, two of them completed now, uh, they're going to build more. He confirmed, yes, they're going to build two more over the other part of the highway. And uh, I asked him, is this for the rail? Some people are claiming this is for the rail system that's going to be coming up. He laughed. He said, no, this is for the cars to go through. Why would they have the tunnels there if for no other reason but checkpoints? So I challenge anybody on this issue here. They're internationalizing Jerusalem. And yes, more people are going to die as a result because of the politics that Israel has to play. But I'm telling you, God soon is going to change this whole tide altogether. He will raise up his two witnesses and he will begin to break this back of Rome and their control that they have in Israel. God is going to get the upper hand and God will bring about the end of the bloodshed that is happening because he's the only one that can truly bring peace. Um, Friends, also in other news there, uh, let me just read to you a little bit about the article here of the, the day of the burial of Rabbi uh, uh, Itam and Naama. Um, it says here that President Reuven Rivlin and Ashkenazi Chief Rabbi David Lau, Deputy Defense Minister Rabbi M.K. Ila bin Dahan, Agricultural Minister Uri Ariel and uh, M.K. Tsipi Livni, were some of the people that were actually seen at the funeral there in Israel. Uh, they also said the arm wing of the Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas Fatah's faction has claimed responsibility for the attack. Rabbi Itman's parents, who made Aliyah from America, are Rabbinet Chana Hinkin, founder of the uh, Nishmat Institute of a uh, Advanced Jewish Studies for Women in Jerusalem, and Rabbi Yehuda Hinkin, known uh, Posek author of the four-volume set, uh, Responsa 
B'nai uh, Banim. The family has requested from the media not to, to live broadcast the ceremony with respect to the family's privacy during uh, this difficult time. Um, very sad, very sad indeed, uh, especially the children uh, who will have to grow up without their parents. It will be devastating to say the very, very least. Uh, moving on in further news as well, we have Russia. This is on TASS News here. Turkey and six countries voice concern over Russia's military actions in Syria. Uh, the article states here, Turkey, the United States, Germany, the United Kingdom, France, uh, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia have called on Russia to stop its airstrikes in Syria. A joint statement unveiled by Turkey's foreign ministry says, we express our deep concern with regard to the Russian military buildup in Syria. The English language statement posted on the ministry's website on Thursday says, these military actions constitute a further escalation and will only fuel more extremist Extremism and radicalization, it says. Russia launched airstrikes against Islamic State positions in Syria on Wednesday at the request of President Bashar Assad. Russia's upper house unanimously gave President Vladimir Putin approval to use the Russian armed forces in abroad earlier that day. Now, I personally think this is about the most hypocritical statement of these countries that you could ever possibly imagine. Here they are claiming to take out ISIS and they at NATO, and these are all NATO members, have been steadily uh, bombing little pinpricks here and there with ISIS, but yet not stopping ISIS at all. And yet when the United States came into Iraq, they were able to put down the entire Iraqi army, everything there within a matter of just a few days. And yet the United States can't stop ISIS. Well, they don't want to stop ISIS because why? The United States armed them. The United States brought this, these rebels in here. One, they're just trying to throw over, overthrow Assad. And why? Again, it's because of the oil. Avi Lipkin is right about that. It's because of the oil in this region. In Russia, they're not even playing games. They come down, they take the land, they're going to make Damascus a ruinous heap. Why? Because it's right there on the border of the Golan where all this oil is. They need all this down in order to be able to completely take control of this area and build up oil rigs. So they need everyone out of the country, uh, in that part of the country anyway. So yes, Damascus and all these uh, bordering towns will become ruinous heaps. The people have to live in other parts of Syria or, of course, as we see them being scattered to the four winds of the earth, much like the Jews. I can't help but think that they're reaping for the evils they did with Titus the Roman general as they were the armies uh, causing the Jews to be scattered to all the world. Very, very serious news that is happening, friends. Uh, I cannot even stress enough uh, of the seriousness of the things that are that are taking place, um, and and of course uh, Russia continually uh, is hammering all the different targets there in um, uh, in in and around um, the areas there. We have some combat footage here to share with you on that, as you've been seeing on your screen already there, uh, that the Defense Ministry has released uh, more combat footage showing the strike of the terrorist targets in Syria. Uh, this is courtesy of RT News, and uh, the ministry announced that throughout the second day of the air campaign, the SU-24 and the SU-25 jets conducted eight flights from uh, uh, Himamim, base in Latika, province of the Mediterranean coast, targeting five Islamic State targets. Uh, but they've done more and more missions, and it is only going to continue to increase until there is no Damascus. I'm Stephen Benun reporting to you this morning with Israeli News Live. Bokitov.